The 1995 Mortal Kombat movie stands as a shining example of how filmmakers can and should adapt a video game to the silver screen. From the meticulously crafted characters to the gripping yet sometimes confusing plot, everything is mostly faithful to the source material. But let's talk about what arguably stands at the heart of Mortal Kombat. The fights. Fight. A movie based on Mortal Kombat requires nothing short of outstanding throwdowns to capture the essence of the franchise. Today, I'm diving deep into every fight scene in the 95 film, ranking them on a tier list. This ranking is based purely on my personal enjoyment and the overall impact of each battle, considering the choreography, the use of character abilities, the stakes, and of course, how they contribute to the narrative. I will be covering all 11 one-on-one -on -one battles that are dispersed throughout the movie's 101 minute runtime. Each fight will be assigned to a tier, ranging from S tier, which is the cream of the crop, down to D tier, which while still enjoyable, didn't quite hit the mark for me. Be sure to drop your rankings in the comments below so we can discuss. And without any further ado, let's rank every fight in the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Let Mortal Kombat begin. Let's kick things off with Chan versus Shang Tsung. I like this fight a lot because I think it sets the stage for what's going to unfold for the remainder of the film. The setting places both characters in the Shaolin Temple, but with a dark, cloudy backdrop. Although you don't know who either character is at this stage, the fight captures your interest while immediately putting questions into your head. It also informs the audience about Shang Tsung, who is the evil sorcerer and primary antagonist of the film. With Chan's ultimate death, it gives Liu Kang an added motivation to enter Mortal Kombat in addition to giving him a reason to oppose Shang Tsung. It also comes into play later in the film, albeit in a somewhat ridiculous manner. Your brother's soul is mine. As for negatives, I would say that it's definitely too short and should have been dragged out a little bit longer. I know that they're working with a PG-13 rating, which restricts any possibility of blood or excessive gore, but a soul steal would have been perfect in this moment. I mean, Chan comes back later in the film, so giving us the visual of Shang Tsung stealing his soul would have definitely added more to the sequence later. I'm putting this fight into the A tier. It's a great establishing battle between good and evil, and it achieves the goal of getting the audience interested in the story and Liu Kang's desire to enter the tournament. Next, we have the battle of Sub-Zero and Nameless Henchmen. I strongly debated not even including this one in the video just because it's not so much of a fight as it is a showcase of Sub-Zero's powers. And I think in that regard, it shines, depicting Sub-Zero's ice powers in a somewhat realistic manner. Although I do want to believe that Sub-Zero could freeze his opponent, uppercut them, and then the fight would just go on, it's a little bit of a stretch. It builds tension toward an eventual showdown between Sub-Zero and Liu Kang later in the film. As for the negatives, I think you'll start to see a trend here and that this one, just like the last one, is just a little bit short for my liking. I think a one-sided drawn-out fight would have elevated this to the next level and shown just how dangerous Sub-Zero really is. The audience also has no reason to care about this henchman, so swapping him out for an Earthrealm character with a small backstory would have made it that much more impactful. I think this fight is kind of middle of the road, so I'll put it in B tier. I just don't think it's much of a fight, even if it does accomplish the goal that it sets out to accomplish. Up next, we have Liu Kang versus the Fighting Monk. This is the first proper fight of the film, and I think it sets a high bar. The fight is pretty long, clocking in at about 3 minutes and 14 seconds, which allows it to establish Liu Kang as not only a formidable martial artist, but also the protagonist of the film and the person you're rooting for. The setting is excellent, paying homage to Shang Tsung's courtyard from the first game. It also creates a great dynamic where the sorcerer sizes up Liu Kang ahead of their fight later in the film, and it also features a fatality. And I'll just stick with the ending for a minute because it's that good. The audience gets to witness Shang Tsung's ability to steal a soul, which is one of his primary sorcerer powers. As for the negatives, the fighting monk gets no backstory, so once again there's no reason to care about Liu Kang's opponent. And although we do get to see a fatality, in my head it doesn't make any sense as to why Shang Tsung gets to use his on an opponent he didn't even defeat. And lastly, I just want to add that there's a blatant lack of special moves in this movie. I think the flying kick would have fit nicely into the scene, and no, I don't believe that this is the flying kick. Overall, I'm giving this fight an A-tier ranking. 
Welcome. This next fight is a heavy hitter. Johnny Cage versus Scorpion. This is easily one of the best fights in the film, and it's definitely in contention for best fight. The two beloved Mortal Kombat characters encounter each other first in a forest, which is eerily similar to the living forest without the living part. The fight then moves to what most people would say is Scorpion's home, which is hell. There's also a great utilization of the character's special moves, which is something I complained about in the previous fight. We get to see Scorpion's spear, which is his iconic weapon, even if it's not the same one that you would see in the game. He also performs his teleport and toasty fatality, and for the first time in the history of Mortal Kombat, you get to see what it's like when a fatality doesn't work. Some would also say that this is definitely Johnny's shadow kick, but I've always been doubtful of that. And lastly, you get to see Johnny Cage's iconic friendship from the second game. Let's not forget the inclusion of Scorpion's catchphrases. Get over here! Come here! Get down here! I only have two negatives for this fight, with the first one being that Scorpion's explosion just doesn't really make much sense to me. And secondly, Scorpion exiting the movie this early was just a punch in the gut as a longtime fan of this character. Although it does put Johnny Cage over as a formidable fighter in this tournament, Scorpion dying so early just didn't feel right. With all that said, Cage vs. Scorpion is our first S-tier fight. Hello, baby. Did you miss me? Next up, we have Sonya vs. Kano, which is undoubtedly the second most personal fight in the film. Behind Goro and Johnny Cage, of course. <laughs> It became personal with me. The fight occurs on what looks like another version of Shang Tsung's courtyard, which is a subtle nod to the original game. However, what shines here above all else is Trevor Goddard's portrayal of Kano. His on-screen presence is unrivaled, and the way he antagonizes Sonya makes for an intense atmosphere. The slower pace of this fight is completely different than what we've seen up to this point. I feel that that's a positive overall just because you can really see how much these two characters dislike each other. The two have great on-screen chemistry and it even features a nod to Sonya's leg grab and Kano's knife from the first game. Now let's get to the negatives, and again, this is just my opinion so if you feel differently let me know in the comments section. Although the fight does offer a nice change of pace, the choreography can be rough at times. Based on her performance, I find it difficult to believe that Sonya is a formidable fighter that warrants her position in the tournament. Regardless, the ending is satisfying, and Sonya vs. Kano gave us some truly memorable quotes. I'm putting Sonya vs. Kano in the B tier. To win the next match, use the element which brings life. What? The sixth battle on this list pits Liu Kang against Kitana. And I'll just say right off the rip that I don't care much for this fight for reasons that I'll get into a little bit later. But to begin with the positives, it was fun to see these two characters interact in a fight that I would describe as a chess match. And secondly, I enjoyed the beach backdrop even though it was somewhat similar to the Sonya vs Kano and Liu Kang vs Fighting Monk battles. With all that said, I really just don't enjoy this fight, it feels pointless, there's no explanation as to why this happens, and in my opinion, it doesn't effectively build this romance that they're trying to force between Liu Kang and Katana. This fight exists primarily for that reason, in addition to building up the fight between Liu Kang and Sub-Zero, which is coming up next. I didn't like it when I first saw this movie, and I still don't like it today. I'm putting this one in the D tier. Next, we have a classic battle between Liu Kang and Sub-Zero, who in this case is Bi-Han from the original game. It begins with an excellent opening pose by the two characters, which instantly makes me think of the versus screens from Mortal Kombat 3, UMK3, and some other games in the series. The two fighters get right into it, and the pace kicks up quickly, with very entertaining choreography. I particularly like Sub-Zero's wall backflip and his use of kicks. We also get the second appearance of Sub-Zero's Ice ability. Although I do enjoy the fight, I always disliked Katana's Use the element which brings life. The idea that Sub-Zero exits this film after having a bucket of water thrown at him is just so lame. Anyone who used Liu Kang in the original games knows that he has fire powers. How they didn't use this as an opportunity to showcase Liu Kang's fireball is beyond me. I know that he kind of uses it later against Shang Tsung, but why not run with a fire versus ice theme here? It just never made sense. And on top of that, it's too short considering how iconic of a character that Sub-Zero is. 
They could have cut the fight between Liu Kang and Katana entirely, or at least cut it in half, and given this more time. Overall, it's not my favorite fight, but it's still entertaining. And despite all the negatives, I think this fight belongs in the bottom of A tier. After battering a bunch of jobbers, Art Lean squares up against the nine-time Mortal Kombat champion, Goro. This fight sets out to accomplish one goal, establishing Goro as a serious threat to Earthrealm. And I think it accomplishes that goal. Goro absolutely destroys Art Lean without missing a beat, despite Art Lean getting a few clean shots in on him. The fight ends in an incredible Shang Tsung fatality, which forces the Earthrealm fighters to discuss what's next. This outcome builds toward an eventual showdown between Johnny Cage and Goro a little bit later. I've mentioned this a few times earlier in the video, and I'll just reiterate that there's no reason to care about Art Lean. The movie doesn't do much to develop him other than him just being a martial artist. Perhaps some of the Art Lean character development was left on the cutting room floor, but all of these emotions felt toward this character from Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, and Sonya Blade just feels unjustified. I'd also like to add that Goro's finish him is pretty uneventful, and Shang Tsung gets to perform another fatality, despite not partaking in the fight. Lastly, the ending is decent, but I think if Goro had performed a fatality, it would have been much better. I'm placing this one in C tier. It's one-sided, which makes sense, but Goro could have been much greater. I'm sure doing anything more than we see would be challenging in 1995, considering the lack of technology, but it just feels somewhat clunky. All right, let's dance. In the ninth fight of the film, Johnny Cage challenges Goro for the good of Earthrealm and to avenge his best friend, Art Lean. Right off the bat, the inclusion of Johnny Cage's sunglasses was an absolutely brilliant decision. It gave us this memorable line. Those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. I also really appreciate the utilization of Johnny Cage's nut punch. It's such an important move in the game and translates nicely to the screen. It leads to the execution of Johnny Cage's brilliant plan and Goro's ultimate demise. It plays into the theme of Goro's overconfidence, which I really like. As for the negatives, I can't comprehend why they had to make Goro a jobber this rapidly. This is your reigning nine-time Mortal Kombat champion, and he gets in zero offense. It completely kills the momentum of the Art Lean fight. I think the reason this fight plays out the way it does is mainly because of the limitations of Goro's animatronic. It just felt too easy for Johnny Cage to take down this dominant force. This might be controversial, but Johnny Cage vs. Goro is a middle-of-the-pack fight. It's certainly memorable, and it definitely has its moments, but I'm putting this one in the B tier. We have finally arrived at the fight most people would call the best in the movie, Reptile vs. Liu Kang. There's a reason this fight is the thumbnail, and that's because everything about Reptile vs. Liu Kang is perfect, from the build-up, to Reptile's emergence, to the battle that unfolds after. It comes as an unexpected surprise, and this theater reaction shows how hype this was at the time. The dial is turned up to maximum levels with a high-paced scrap between the hero, Liu Kang, and this reptile who has been creeping throughout the film. Reptile is properly depicted as Liu Kang's most threatening opponent yet, and the choreography in this one is top tier. For most of the fight, Reptile and Liu Kang are equals, trading furious strikes with one another. Reptile takes the upper hand early, but Liu Kang mounts an impressive comeback, capped off with his signature bicycle kick. Lastly, the choice of music adds another layer of intensity to an already incredible fight. The only negative I have doesn't necessarily apply to the fight, but it's just posing the question of where does Johnny Cage go? It's been referenced so many times in various critiques of this film, but I think it's worth bringing up here. Some commenters in my recent video covering this film have said Katana gets his attention and then walks with him, but a clear explanation would go a long way. Reptile vs. Liu Kang is everything I wanted out of a fight in a Mortal Kombat movie. It has a dark setting, fast-paced action, and an intense soundtrack. 
This is my favorite fight in the film for all the reasons I've outlined, and I'm placing it atop the list in S tier. Is that all you've got, sorcerer? Liu Kang! I can see into your soul. You will die. Alas, we have finally reached the last fight of the film, where the underdog from the Shaolin Temple, Liu Kang, takes on the relentless, merciless sorcerer, Shang Tsung. This is a solid payoff to the feud that's been developing throughout the film, forcing Liu Kang through a labyrinth of Shang Tsung's abilities. He squares off against Shang Tsung's captured souls, the regrets of his own past, and the enemy that stands before him. Liu Kang's anger translates well, as you can really feel the rage he's built up leading into the showdown with the sorcerer, and I particularly enjoy his brief monologue. No, you'll fight me. I am Liu Kang, descendant of Kung Lao. I challenge you to mortal combat. Do you accept or yield? I accept. Liu Kang draws blood on Shang Tsung, signaling the looming threat the Shaolin monk poses to Outworld's attempt at winning a 10th consecutive tournament. It's a great battle that goes beyond physicality, testing everything Liu Kang has learned to this point in the film. I'd also like to shout out the nod to the pit fatality and the subtle reference to Liu Kang's fireball attack. As for the negatives, I've never been a fan of Shang Tsung trying to weasel his way out of fighting Liu Kang. He captures Sonya, which is fine because it gets the characters to Outworld, and evidently he fears Liu Kang at this point, but he's a sorcerer with countless souls in his favor. A bit more confidence would have strengthened him. The return of Liu Kang's brother Chan was a good choice, but it was executed poorly. Shang Tsung morphing into Chan in front of Liu Kang and Liu Kang believing it was absolutely outrageous. There's a few issues you can pick apart about this fight, but overall, that's not enough to keep it out of S tier. It's a great ending to the film, it perfectly ties up Liu Kang's storyline and gives Earthrealm the win that it deserves. And there you have it, all 11 fights in the Mortal Kombat 1995 film ranked. To recap my rankings, Reptile vs Liu Kang, Scorpion vs Johnny Cage, and Liu Kang vs Shang Tsung all ended up in the S tier. Chan Kang vs Shang Tsung, Liu Kang vs The Fighting Monk, and Liu Kang vs Sub-Zero went into the A tier. B tier includes Sonya vs Kano, Sub-Zero vs Nameless Henchman, and Johnny Cage vs Goro. The C tier only includes Art Lean vs Goro. And finally, Liu Kang vs Katana sits alone in the D tier. In all honesty, I love this movie and enjoy every fight differently. However, some are better than others. I could see some commenters disagreeing with my takes on Sonya vs Kano and maybe even Johnny Cage vs Goro, but that's the beauty of a tier list. If you feel differently or disagree with any of the rankings I've provided, feel free to drop your tier list in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out.